Why don't I just use the AMS as the dry box and hook up the poly dryer to it directly? At 11.30 p.m. Monday night, I decided I was gonna pivot to this whole new project. I only had until Wednesday to test, print, modify, film, and edit. This wasn't a great decision. Last week we took a look at the poly dryer. This is a new product that intrigued me because it's a filament dryer and a filament storage system. So I was watching a ModBot video. He was covering an AMS mod that allowed for one of these poly dryer bases to be installed on the enclosure of the AMS mod. So the thing that I like about the poly dryer is the fact that the base can be moved from box to box. And really that means any box that has holes in it that the base can made up to could really be a dry box. It doesn't need to be the Polymaker dry box. Now as I was thinking about that, Orca Slicer had an update that showed the humidity inside of the AMS by giving it a rating 1 through 5. And I noticed that my AMS, that was at a 5. That was a wet rating. A lot of moisture in there. And I had some filament in there that doesn't want that moisture. Finally, after Corey and I were filming all evening, getting a video ready so I can get one out this week before I go on vacation, it all clicked. Why don't I just use the AMS as the dry box and hook up the poly dryer to it directly? I've never been a fan of desiccant or maintaining desiccant as it absorbs moisture. So this would actually solve that problem because I'd be able to dry filament in the AMS whenever I needed, or I could print from it as a dry box if the filament I was using was really sensitive to moisture too. So just like that, my mind was made up. Even though earlier in the evening, Corey and I had done a lot of preparation and filming to make sure I would have the video done before I left to go out of town. Instead, this is what I'm doing. So this project started off as many of them do. I did some measurements, I held it up to the box to scout out some locations to kind of mount everything. I stared at the box for a while, I stared at the dryer, I measured again, I held the dryer up to the box some more, stared at it some more, repeated that process until I felt like I kind of had my head wrapped around sort of a direction I wanted to go. This part seems to take the longest because you have so many options and it really determines the whole direction of the project. So you do want to make sure you think these things through, but also it's important that you don't get so bogged down that you don't start on the project. Ask me how I know. So step one of this project was going to be removing the main guts of the AMS. Luckily that main chassis comes out pretty easily. That's just two screws and then removing a PTFE tube from the back. So this wasn't a very big deal. From there all you have to worry about is unplugging two plugs towards the back of the unit. As a side note, if you're doing this for the first time, I think it's important that you drop these two little screws every time you do this because I've dropped these two little screws accidentally every time I've done this, and I've seemed to have good luck. With all that stuff out of the way, I can get a better look at this box to scout out a location for my ports. I think what I'm gonna do is just put the base down and use some ducting, drill some holes in the box, and then connect it all that way. So redirect the airflow from the base into the box by way of these ducts. The sides of the box were a little bit too thick and the lid was thin enough, but had a complex curve. The flat sides of the lid couldn't really accommodate the size of the dryer. It was looking more and more like the front was gonna be the only real viable option for me to mount the dryer. With my location scouted out successfully, I moved on to measuring the outlets from the dryer so I could make some ducts that would connect those outlets to the dry box. These needed to fit snug on the outlets in order to direct as much air as possible without so much of it leaking that it actually doesn't work. Once I retrieved the measurements I needed, I began modeling these ducts a little bit using Onshape. Onshape's a free browser-based parametric CAD program, so it was really gonna suit this project well. 
I began by making a rectangle based on the measurements that I just got, and I added a 0 0.02 inch buffer to all of the critical fitment sort of areas. I find that 3D printed parts have sort of that tolerance between what you measure and what you CAD and what actually gets printed. Once I had that rectangular piece modeled, I just mirrored it to the other end, connected the two rectangular bits so I would have one piece to work with. So so this would allow me to make a different sketch that would be the other end of the ducting. I ended up using an offset plane for this sketch because I didn't know exactly where the other end of the outlets needed to land. This would give me a parameter that I could adjust as I did more testing to fine tune the measurements a little bit. I started by sketching two circles. I added points to the top of them to make them a little bit more printable. That way I wouldn't have to use support material because support material sucks. From there, it was just a matter of connecting the two sketches with a loft. Onshape has pretty good control over your lofts. You can set a lot of your conditions and change the values and really make the loft turn out how you intend just by changing the values they have available. Unfortunately, my version one ducting didn't make it past the slicing phase. I brought it into Orca Slicer and began looking at it. Only then did I realize there was an unsupported overhang that was not gonna print well. I don't like support material, so this was not gonna be acceptable. Back to the loft parameters we go. I was able to adjust the start and end parameters a little bit more to ensure that the angles that were created weren't gonna be too steep that they needed supports. This way everything was printed at a shallow enough angle that an overhang would be able to compensate and no extra support material would be needed. The version 2 print was looking a lot better so I decided to send that one to the printer put some mouse ears on there to make sure it stuck down to the plate, and we were off to the races, baby! You like that? This print took like a half hour or something. It was super quick. The mouse ears came off very easily, nice and clean, and just printing the one duct was sufficient enough for me to check the tolerances and move on to the next step. The duct fit snugly on the base, which was pretty lucky first try. So I moved on by refining the model a little bit and adding a couple of hooks on the other end of the ducting so that hopefully it could hook into the AMS and be a little bit more secure on that side. I went ahead and sent this full model to the printer. That way I would have a more complete prototype to work off of as I was doing measurements getting ready to cut into the AMS. By setting this on the dryer base and then moving that up against the AMS, I was able to get the heights that this was gonna sit at so I could mark the holes that I needed to cut in. From there, I began tracing those holes, the shapes that I needed to cut with a Sharpie, which was kind of silly because Sharpies don't get you a very accurate line, but that's what I did. I quickly realized I needed to change the strategy a little bit, so I wiped off that Sharpie. I put some tape in the areas that I was gonna trace, and then I still used Sharpie to trace the shapes. At least it was on tape now. Next, I printed off some templates that would allow me to more easily trace the shape that I needed onto the AMS box. I did this by cutting the existing duct model in Orca Slicer, and I just shaved off the tips of that end of the ducting. That way I would get the correct shape. So this was a good idea, cutting the model and then just printing the end of the ducting so I would get the right shape. My execution was lacking a little bit. The mouse ears didn't get turned off because somebody forgot to turn them off. The model was so thin that it all just kind of fused together. I didn't let that discourage me and I pressed on. This was good enough for me to get the shape pretty close. So I gave it a shot and went ahead and traced anyway. 
Initially, I began cutting into the AMS using the Dremel that we use for testing videos. It very quickly became apparent that this was gonna be much messier than I was anticipating, and it was way messier than I wanted to get this room. So I quickly moved out into the garage and decided to trash my workbench instead. After the addition of some safety glasses, I was ready to continue on my work cutting into the AMS. I wanted to make sure I got the shape as close as I could to my lines, but I also didn't want to obsess over it because I meant to get this done quickly to kind of prove the concept. Those were my parameters and I just went ahead and cut. Now it wasn't exceptionally pretty and the fit wasn't like super precise, but it was certainly gonna fit well enough for us to do some testing without leaking all of the air from the dryer base immediately. And that's good enough for me. The only thing I was able to glean from this test was the ends needed to protrude into the box a little bit more. So I had to do something about that. I went ahead and moved on to version three of my duct here. I took off the little hooks because they didn't really do anything for me. And I made the ends stick into the box a little bit further. The taper that the shape has kind of naturally creates a dodgy sort of interference fit with the holes that I cut out. So that was gonna be good enough for my purposes. Again, this wasn't uh, a perfect fit. These weren't super precise mating surfaces. There's no gasket material happening here, but it was definitely good enough to prove the concept. With that victory under my belt, I went ahead and reassembled everything. I put the AMS chassis back in. I put the two screws back in. I plugged the plugs back in without forgetting. I put the PTFE tube in there. I threw the two spools of ASA and ABS GF back in there because they were the ones that were exposed to the moisture in the first place. This was gonna give us a good test subject to see if any of this was worth doing. I ordered some hygrometers so I could put them in the box and compare the data that they gave me against what Orca Slicer was giving me. That way we can see if this setup is actually doing anything or if I just wasted a little bit of time trying. With two of those hygrometers put in the box, the dryer base and the ducting attached, I gave power to the AMS, put it back on top of my printer, I pushed the power button on the dryer, set the temperature, set the time, pushed play, and the rest would be up to fate. Now before we get into the results, I just want to take a second and thank you for watching the video here. If you have any ideas that you want to see us do or stuff that you want to see us explore, please let us know in the comments and we'll see what we can do about that. Also if you want to get a poly dryer or you want to get any Polymaker filament or any of their products, feel free to use the link in the description. That tells Polymaker that we sent you there and so that helps the channel out a little bit. Give it a look, it's some good stuff over there. Just to recap, this is a prototype duct. The gaps aren't necessarily airtight, and it is made out of PLA. Who knows how it's going to withstand the temperatures that the dryer creates? But at any rate, we can use it to prove the concept here. Even with those facts kind of working against us, this actually yielded some results a lot sooner than I was expecting, and they're a lot better than I was expecting too. After running the unit for about an hour and a half, our humidity has gone down from 60% at 71 degrees from the beginning to 43% at 83 degrees. Just in an hour and a half, with all the dodgy seals and everything like that. That's pretty good. I'm taking that as a huge win. Right now, my AMS doubles as a filament dryer, and when I woke up this morning, it didn't double as a filament dryer. That's pretty cool. There's definitely stuff that needs to be refined a little bit. There's development that needs to happen. I want to use TPU as gaskets to make things more airtight, and I want to clean up the holes so they don't look so dumb. All sorts of things that are going to happen. But in terms of proof of concept, right now, my AMS is a filament dryer, and you should make yours a filament dryer, because it's kind of cool.
Let me know in the comments, what do you use to dry your filament? We got some good feedback on the last video on what people are using to dry their filament and what issues they have with storage. So let me know in the comments what kind of setup you use. Also, have you heard of anybody doing this with their AMS or using the poly dryer base to dry other enclosures? Let me know what kind of stuff you've seen or what kind of stuff you've done as well. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.